as always, Ted, kick us off. Who do you have as your winner of the weekend? I got to go with the Big 12. Oh, big money, Big 12. Let's go. According to Pete Thamel, the Big 12 is on the cusp of extending its current television contract with ESPN and Fox to the tune of a six-year, $2.28 billion contract extension that includes a huge step up in pay. Going to be around the 50 million per school mark game changing money um for the schools that are staying this is an absolute home run if you're Houston UCF BYU and Cincinnati you just hit the damn lottery right off of coming off of conferences that make like what 10 million a year so you just hit the lottery on this deal um it's awesome, and they're giving a lot of credit to your mark and how he approached this deal. Did not go to the open market. Started negotiating early with the current partners with Fox and ESPN. Set everything in motion. Um, this is big. This is big for the Big Twelve. You and I both agree that this is going to be an excellent conference, even without Oklahoma and Texas moving forward. In- incredibly uh, competitive across all sports. Um, with some really good schools, really competitive schools in there. I think this is a uh, this is an awesome win for the Big 12 and comes, you know, right on the hills of your mark saying what last week. He's uh, he's letting it be known. He's not hiding. We're going national. We want to take this conference national. So um, really good stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was a it was a big big win uh, for the future of the Big 12 and a huge win. For Brett Yormark. This is this is why he got the job. This is what he said he was going to do. And he got it done and he got it done quickly. And he got it done before the Pac-12 got it done. So I, I am interested to see if he's able to use this. I, I'm interested to see if there's anything built into the agreement where it says they make X amount more if they add more teams. Yeah. Right. And if that allows him to go to some of these teams in the Pac 12 saying, Hey, we've got this number. And if you come, it's this number. That's right. And that hey, puts, hey, yeah, go ahead. Klyavkov in a very tricky spot. Remember that he was preaching, Hey, we're all together, patience, all this stuff. These universities start seeing these dollar figures and they start getting scared that they may not get it. I, I know you preach patience like, hey, when we go to the open market, we're going to get more. There's Amazon. There's Apple. There's all that. Now that the Big 12's got it done before him, there's there'll be some nervous administrators, Ted. Yep. No, I, I totally agree. Um, I, I think there, there, there's definitely going to come a time where people consume live sports the same way they do television through streaming services. I think that just seems like the natural way things are going to go, but ain't yet. That ain't happening yet. People still prefer to watch live sports on their television, the traditional way and ESPN and Fox uh, is the way to go right now for the big 12. And I, I don't even know the fact that they got this done before the, like the pac 12 really, they don't have a whole heck of a lot to stand on. And you're right. Like if this, if there's, if there's like the, that, that extra little segment of the contract for adding teams by 2025 or whenever that, whenever it's supposed to go into uh, effect, which I believe was 2025 is what it said. Um, $50 million with the current market for the PAC 12, buddy, Utah, Colorado, and the Arizona schools, or probably having a meeting right now saying, let's go, let's go. So I, I thought it was a huge win for the Big 12. I'm with you. And j- just one last thing, I'm happy. I mean, we're Big 12 guys. We'll always be Big 12 guys. I know, and a lot of people saw this, and like, yes, it's not it's not close with the Pac-12 or what the, uh, the Big 10 and the SEC are going to bring in, right? We all know that. But – it feels 
It feels really good for the for the Big Ten. Why can't I say conferences right now? What is happening to me? Well, it's good for the Big Twelve. None of it makes any sense. There's <laughs> the, the teams I, don't like. It's not like I, I will say with ESPN not being involved in the Big Ten's new deal, right? And they're probably going to prop up the Big 12 a little more. I, I mean, I think that's natural to assume, like the Big 12 is going to get some some better slots. You know, the SEC will get the best ones, right? That's just how it's going to work. But the Big 12, the new Big 12, whatever you want to call it, they may get they may get some more love with ESPN, you know, now that they're not worried about the Big 10. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, fascinated to see what this means for really the rest of the conferences. Yeah, what's it mean for the Big Ten adding? What's it mean for the Big 12 adding? What's it mean for OU and Texas as far as dates are concerned moving to the SEC? You know, I, I know that everything still says that that 2025 starting date, which, you know, I, I've got no problem if we wait until then, right, to get to get ourselves in order. but you know, I feel like this contract getting done is very meaningful for the time frame moving forward for Oklahoma. Yep. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. All right. Who do you have as your loser of the weekend? The Carolina Panthers. Ooh. It what has to be one of the craziest exchanges I've seen. In case everyone didn't witness this, the Panthers are down six. They're playing Atlanta somehow for first place in the NFC South, okay? They're down six. There's 30 seconds to go. They're on their own 38-yard line. P.J. Walker, who they acquired off the street, essentially was playing in the, in the XFL a couple of years ago for Houston. First and 10, rolls to his left, throws a bomb all the way down the field, touchdown to DJ Moore. All they have to do is kick the extra point, game over, 15 seconds left. Uh, DJ Moore gets a penalty, 15-yarder, taking his hat off or helmet off, excessive celebration, backs the extra point up, miss the extra point. We're going to overtime. In overtime is, uh, you know, the football gods would have it. You missed the field goal on the uh, on the opening possession. And Atlanta, easy as can be, right down the field, kicks the field goal to win it. Carolina loses. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. I personally, and I know it's a penalty. I think you hold that flag if you're that official. I just, it, it was a massive play. It was just super emotional. Rips the helmet off. He's like screaming. I was not a big fan of the call. Like, I mean, he wasn't like screaming in a, Falcons players face really or anything like that. I don't know, man. It, that's I, ag a, I agree with you. I, that's a I tough way to lose a game. I don't care about. Uh, I think a celebration penalty is dumb. If anything, like after a moment like that on that type of play, that type of bomb, it's a delay of game, right? You got to get off the field. We got to continue the game. Delay of game. I don't care that he took his helmet off. I, I think it's I think it's dumb. But here's the thing: it's a rule, man. It's a yeah. rule, and that's that's part of it is keeping your emotions in check. Brutal. I think that I was. saw only only two times in like the last I don't know what the number was years that a kicker has missed. Uh, an extra point to win it and a field goal to win it in the same game. And it's, I, I think maybe the last 20 years, something like that. Tough. 
That's Eddie that's Pinheiro tough. with the with a couple of misses. You think he's mad at DJ Moore? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. All right, let's get to my winner and loser. But first. First Fidelity Bank is a full-service financial institution based in Oklahoma with tailored solutions for all your personal and business needs. Checking accounts, saving accounts, home loans, and much more. They do it all, whether it's online banking from your computer or mobile banking from your phone. Everything is stress-free with FFB. Making mobile deposits, paying bills online, and moving money to different accounts could not be easier. First Fidelity Bank provides free ATMs worldwide, making banking convenient wherever you are. They also give back to the community. FFB donates a total of more than $500,000 to local charities and educational foundations. Make your life easier and go bank with First Fidelity Bank. Visit ffb.com for more information. And if you're a whiskey or bourbon drinker, stop what you are doing. Head to your favorite liquor store and buy some Balcones products. You got to grab some of Balcones Lineage Single Malt Whiskey. It was voted one of the top 20 whiskeys in the world by Whiskey Advocate, and you'll be shocked by how affordable it is. Also, you got to snag some of Balcones Baby Blue Corn Whiskey. It's made from blue corn. That's the fancy corn. And that is why it has won more than 25 awards. Last but certainly not least, you got to buy some of Balcones Pot Still Bourbon. It's big flavors make it the perfect bourbon to drink year round. Remember in 2012. Balcony Single Malt won the best in glass competition, beating brands like Johnny Walker and McAllen. This stuff is the real deal, people. If you love great whiskey and bourbon at a great price, then Balcony's products are the only way to go. The whiskey may be made in Texas, but the owners are from Oklahoma. To find a liquor store that has it, visit BalconiesDistilling.com. All right, for my winner of the weekend. Ted, do you know who Isaiah Joe is? No. Na- name doesn't ring a bell at all, I'm assuming. Nope. And I I guarantee you, you're not alone. But Isaiah Joe had himself a weekend because that man buried a three for the Oklahoma City Thunder. I was up late Saturday night watching me some <laughs> NBA basketball, baby. And he buried a three to tie things up at 99, eventually sent the Thunder Mavs game into overtime where then he proceeded to drop another eight points in overtime to cap off an awesome comeback win for the Oklahoma City Thunder. It was great. It was one of those, like, they just signed him. He's barely been there. Like, no, no, he's just a nobody in the NBA and absolutely stepped up in huge moments. Now, that's awesome. Shea Gilgis Alexander was also that dude. Uh, dropped, Dropped a 38 piece. He was fantastic as well, but Isaiah Joe, Ted, I love stuff like this. No, I do too. Anytime you've got a guy just showing up, trying to do anything to earn the stripes, stay on a team, trying to get a little bit of tenure in the league, and you do something like that, that gains you a little bit of confidence and rest easy maybe for a couple of nights. Yeah, and one thing, Lou Dort was kind of back to being himself. He was a pest for Luka Doncic. Such a pest, in fact, that Luka Doncic, after the game, said he's one of the top three defenders in the NBA. Really? Okay. Yeah. That's got to make our man Dort feel good. That yeah. was, I know it made me feel good. Well, it makes you get back to what got you where you are, right? Ah, okay. I'm getting, I'm getting credit for being great at defense. Let's continue to put our focus there. Yeah. But my winner of the weekend, Lane Kiffin. I mean, <laughs> it was so Ole Miss goes to College Station, hands Texas A and M another L. By the way, the Aggies are now three and five on the season. I I will say this about A and M. I can understand why some Aggie fans have a little hope. Connor Wegman could rip it, man. Yeah, he he looked. You know, he made some mistakes, but he looked really good. I mean, it, as a true freshman, like. You can see it. That guy, that guy should be a dude for them if they don't mess him up somehow. But I, I don't know why he wasn't playing already, but he, he, looked, he looked miserable out there from when I switched it over and started watching that game. Dude, he, that's he and, took and a Jimbo big Fisher's shot. gonna get some questions. He took that big shot to the head 
And I, I don't know if who he was talking to was a trainer or what, but when Jimbo kind of ripped him away from it and he went back out there and he was all wide eyed and then came back to the bit, that was, that was not a good look for Jimbo Fisher. Well, he kept asking him, are you okay? And you know, well, what's he going to say? No right. coach. That's it. Exactly. I'm concussed. Like he's not going to say that. Yeah. He, uh, he, he looked like a UFC fighter between rounds is yes. how, how bad he looked from that point on. <laughs> that is, that's a great way of putting it. But Lane Kiffin's the winner of the weekend because now his team, you know, it was a good game and they, they finished the job, right? I thought Jackson Dart did some really good things, throwing the ball, continues to use his legs as a weapon. Uh, Quinshaw Judkins, happy birthday to that young man. 205 rushing yards on that A&M defense, but Lane Kiffin's post-game interview was priceless. I mean, I was cracking up. What did he do? One of the first things he was like, oh, 390 yards rushing against a bunch of five stars is pretty good. I mean, he was just taking shot after shot. Our buddy Cole Kublik asked him what he was going to be for Halloween. <laughs> he said, maybe Jimbo has a Joker outfit for me. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was hilarious. I think he was a little uh, perturbed at all of the fake injuries. I, I mean, A&M did the thing, and they they did it so often. It was insane, like just yeah. laying down, trying to slow Ole Miss down. And I think that was – I think that was what had Kiffin in that mood after the game, but it was wildly entertaining. No, it was, it was crazy. Now, A&M made it a game late. And then did you see the end of that game? There's like a, a minute and 35, a minute. They had 40 the ball left. to go win it. Basically. I mean, because the onside kick got, uh, didn't get it, but then got the stop. They didn't, they kicked it deep. The kicker, like, so they line up to kick off and Ole Miss has their hands team and they don't have anyone deep. So all you do is just chip it over the the front line and okay, they run back there and they dive on it. That's fine. Like you don't have to do like a, an onside kick right there, but the kicker kicked it through the end zone and Jimbo Fisher it. and the special teams coach went insane on that kicker. Like you, Jimbo's like, what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> I, I guess missed that. Didn't I was see that there was nobody back deep or something. I don't know what happened, but boy, I was watching. I was like, what are they doing? Why just chip it over the top out of the end zone? Amazing. Oh, that's brutal. Well, that makes it even better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For my loser of the weekend, uh, thought about going with that situation after the Michigan, Michigan state game. Whoa. Yeah, that I, was I mean, wild. That that was ugly. I've got a lot of questions for a lot of people. And I understand it's one tunnel, but it's been that way for forever. How did the Michigan guys end up on their own? You know what's interesting is... How are they alone? This, this got brought up last week by Franklin, remember? Yeah. He was talking about the tunnel and something's got to be done and it's not safe. And Jim Harbaugh's like, yeah, well that was the Penn state guys, you know? So if anything needs to happen, it needs to happen on their end. And here it is. It's almost like to prove the point that the single tunnel is not a good idea that I, I don't know. That was, that was wild. Yeah. I'm not trying to excuse what the Michigan state players right. did right there. There's, I mean, there's just no room for that either, but it's just a real, it's a terrible idea to be in that situation alone, man. Yep. I, so, you know, strength in numbers. I don't know how <laughs> those guys ended up there. You know, you know, movies or like TV shows where it like cuts to the narrator and they're like, you may be wondering how I ended up here. <laughs> right. That's yeah. what was going through my head. It's like, how did those guys end up alone? That's wild. Yeah. I, I don't know. But Big Ten cops investigating that whole thing. Ugh. That's so assault, brother. That's assault, brother. But that was a uh, that was a bad situation. But my loser of the weekend, the fan base was so fired up, Ted. The New York Jets. Mm. So much excitement 
around the team. MetLife was breathing fire early. They wore the sweet black helmets and everything. And Bill and Belichick and your New England Patriots. They own the Jets, man. I mean, Bill Belichick owns the Jets. Patriots have now beat them 13 times in a row, which is insane in the National Football League. That's an insane streak. And Zach Wilson, he had some he had some rough throws, don't get me wrong. But the game started well for him. Looked like they were getting things rolling. Now the the pick six that got called back. That was that was a huge play. But right. Mac Jones did some good things. Solid day for Ramondre Stevenson. And I know not eye popping stats, but thought he played well. And now Bill Belichick is second all time in coaching wins. Solo second in NFL history. Poor Jets. They thought they they were so fired up, and the Patriots came and just pushed them around like they have been for years. Well, in order to uh, to get the guys amped up for the game and to um, and to watch some good solid football, the Patriots flew into Iowa to watch the uh, the Sooners pound Iowa State. Before uh, before heading back and beating the Jets, do no one but the people that were on the plane home get your joke? <laughs> what was that plane doing I, there? The Patriots I, plane was on the tarmac in Des Moines, Iowa. Yes, the Patriots, and it said six times Super Bowl champ. It was the team plane for sure. Yes, I'm guessing they've got a new one now, and they sold that to someone. And a big, a big some company Patriots who charters it out. <laughs> Let me paint the pic. Like we're getting on the Delta charter flight to come back. You go to Des Moines, right? You go to the Des Moines airport to fly back from the Iowa state game. And the Patriots team plane is sitting right next to the Delta plane. And we're all like, what the hell is happening? Like, and we're checking the schedule. We're like, well, there's not an NFL team. But I, we were so confused. And then, one guy was like, oh, they sold the plane to this company, and now they just charter it out. I was – but we all were trying to figure out what the hell was going on. Yep. That was pretty cool, though. Pretty cool. Yeah, sorry, Jets. Yeah, right when you, – you've got it right where you want them. They're not playing good. Patriots are down. Like, what's happening? QB controversy. QB controversy. No big deal. Jets is our get-right game. I <laughs> – the Jets miss Brees Hall. That yeah. run game just it, – it's not the same without them. So do the Iowa State Cyclones. Correct. 